Corticon makes it easy to create and update complex business rules that are deployed as web services. To build a set of rules, we need a vocabulary for our rule language. In this video, we will take a look at the language that describes the grocery store example in the Corticon Studio tutorial, Advanced Rule Modeling. The first step in creating this vocabulary is to collect information about the business problems. In this example, a grocery store wants to do the basic bookkeeping tasks of adding up a cart of groceries as well as to provide registered customers with rewards, coupons for buying certain items, quantities, and sales totals. The vocabulary provides the basis for operations in rule sheets that define conditions, filters, and actions that are tested as a set of rules and then deployed together as a decision service. A structured vocabulary defines diverse entities in the language as well as their respective attributes and the nature of their association with other entities. We used a fact model tool to sketch the terms we gathered that describe our business environment that will be modeled. Here we call out the customer entity. These are the customer's attributes and the customer's association with the shopping cart. Let's define this vocabulary in Corticon Studio. We create a new rule project and name it Grocery Store. And then we create a new vocabulary, also named Grocery Store, within our project. We see our eCore file in the project and open it in the vocabulary editor. We'll add all the entities to the vocabulary first. The customer entity, the shopping cart entity, the item entity, the preferred account entity, and the coupon entity. Next we'll add the attributes of each entity. For the customer, we first add name. Then we add is preferred member. We set the properties to note that the attribute is a true false item, a boolean. It is also a transient, a temporary item will evaluate every time we run this rule so that it is looked up in the preferred account records every time. We then proceed to add the attributes and properties of each of the other entities into the vocabulary. For the shopping cart, total amount is a decimal data type. We will do calculations on decimal values. Check ID is a true false value, a Boolean. Cash back earned is a decimal. and also a transient. Use cash back is a boolean. And savings is a decimal. That defines the shopping cart attributes. For item, barcode is a string and base mode, the default values. Department, name, and price, a decimal data type. That defines the item attributes. The preferred account attributes are card number, it is text, so we leave it as a string, and cumulative cash back will be calculated so we want it to be a decimal data type. That completes the preferred account attributes. The coupon entity uses dates in its attributes. Description, Issue Date, and Expiration Date. That defines the coupon attributes. We complete the vocabulary by defining the associations between entities. We start with customer. We want to associate 
many customers with one preferred account. When we click OK, we see that the association's cardinality is many to one. We also want to associate one customer with many shopping carts. For shopping cart, one cart can have many items. You may have noticed that the coupon entity has no association. In our design, it was decided that coupons will have a printed expiration date, but they will not be associated with the customer once they are issued. The fully defined rule vocabulary for the advanced tutorial is now complete. Let's save it. Now let's see how we can read the vocabulary structure. As we noted, coupons are an independent entity. Rules will generate coupons. Preferred account, item, and shopping cart are all in the customer hierarchy. By expanding customer, we can read that a named customer might be a preferred member. If so, their membership information is available. The customer's shopping carts have details about the cart. It is an empty cart until it has one or more items. Each item in this shopping cart for this customer has identifying information and price for the shopping cart and the customer. This vocabulary is ready to provide project-specific terms to the rule language that will be used with rule operators as we build rule sheets. That completes our look at creating a Corticon vocabulary.